Good day Grade 12s. Welcome to this final lesson in week 15 on rate and extent of reaction. In this lesson we're going to look at measuring rates of reactions. Before we talk about how to measure rates of reactions, let's just talk about definitions. There are two definitions you need to know. The first one is rate of reaction, which is the amount of product formed per unit time or the amount of reactants used up per unit time. So we can either look at it as how quickly we are using up the reactants or how quickly we are producing products. Please note that the yield of the reaction is the amount of product formed in a reaction is based on the amount of reactants. It is different from the rate of reaction. So you can have a very quick reaction, which would be a very fast or high rate of reaction, which actually give you a very low yield. In other words, you didn't get much out. Okay, so you need to distinguish between those two different things. One way of finding the rate of a reaction is to measure the amount of products formed in a certain time. We can measure the amount of product by finding mass, number of moles, concentration, or number of particles. If we were measuring the number of particles of a product, for example, we would take measurements over small time intervals tabulate the data collected, and then plot a graph. Let's consider the combustion of magnesium in oxygen as an example. Magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Before the reaction starts, we have magnesium atoms and oxygen molecules as the reactants. There is no product or magnesium oxide. The reaction starts when energy is added and then the atoms of magnesium and oxygen molecules combine to form magnesium oxide particles in a very short time. Can you sketch a graph to show how the number of product particles changes for this reaction? Notice at the start, there are no particles of magnesium oxide. But once the reaction starts, the number of product particles increases rapidly and then remains constant. We can use the gradient of this type of graph to find the reaction rate. Remember, to work out the gradient of a straight line, we use the formula change in y divided by change in x. We can use the same formula for a curve to find the average gradient between two points in time. Notice, in the first time interval, the average gradient is very steep and positive because a large number of product particles formed in a short time we can say that the reaction rate is high. Notice, in the second time interval, the gradient has decreased, and we say the reaction rate has decreased too. In the third time interval, the gradient is zero. There is no more change in the number of product particles because the reaction has stopped. The rate of reaction is zero. We used a graph that plotted the number of product particles against time. We could also have used mass of products, moles of products, or concentration of products. We can use any of these graphs to calculate the reaction rate, or we can use the following formula. Reaction rate equals the change in the concentration of a product over time. We use square brackets to indicate concentration. Remember, the number of product particles formed is linked to the number of particles of reactant we have at the start. Can you predict what happens to the number of particles of reactants during the reaction of magnesium and oxygen? It will be clearer if we represent the changes in the number of reactant particles on a graph. At the start, 
the number of reactant particles is initially high, but in a very short time, the number of particles of reactants decreases. Eventually, all the magnesium atoms and oxygen molecules have reacted, as shown by the steep curve on the graph. Notice that the gradient of the curve is negative because the reactants are being used up. The gradient is large to begin with, but becomes less steep until all the reactants are used up. So we can define a second formula of reaction rate as the reaction rate equals the negative change in the concentration of a reactant over time. Now there are various ways to measure the reaction rates, and we're going to talk about each one of these. The first way is looking at the rate at which the gas volume is produced and we call this quantitative because we can actually measure it. We can actually see how many milliliters of gas is produced per unit time. Another way of measuring reaction rates is to look at turbidity. Now this is a fancy word for the rate of which precipitation is formed and you will be seeing a video on this, but this is qualitative. And the reason we say it's qualitative is because you can't exactly say, okay, well this is um, level six on how yellow it is. It is more qualitative in the sense that you would tell me when you think the X has disappeared or the color has changed. changed. And makes it slightly more di difficult to measure the reaction rate, which is why you have to be more careful when you're doing this type of measurement. Similarly, we can have change of color. In other words, there can be a color change from clear to purple or from green to pink. And again, it's qualitative because as you guys know, there's a very fine line as to or fine point as to when the color can change. And if you're saying, yep, I see a color change and your body says, nope, that's not a color change, but the next drop is been causing a color change, then that's why this is a qualitative thing. You can't say, oh, it went from, that's almost a green. Okay, so there's no rating for the green. You have to decide when you think the color has changed. And the final way that we can measure reaction rates is to look at the change in mass of the reaction vessel. In other words, we can see how much mass is either increasing or decreasing in the reaction vessel. And because we can actually measure it with a scale, this is again quantitative. Now, grade 12, this may seem all airy fairy and a bit up in the air for you, which is why on the next four slides we have videos that show you what we're talking about when we're talking about these different types of measuring reaction rates. Do you know how we could measure the reaction rate of a reaction that produces a gas? I hope you thought of this next idea. We could collect the gas produced. How do we collect a gas? One method is to use a gas syringe. Look at this. Here we have magnesium reacting with hydrochloric acid. Hydrogen gas is produced. As the gas forms, it rises and pushes the plunger of the gas syringe back. We can then measure the volume of gas produced in a specific time. There is another method we can use to collect a gas to measure it. That is by the downward displacement of water. You see, we can collect the carbon dioxide when a carbonate reacts with an acid. We fill a measuring cylinder with water and carefully turn it upside down. Then we place a delivery tube from the flask to the mouth of the measuring cylinder. We can now catch the bubbles of carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide pushes the water down. We can then measure the volume of gas produced in a certain time. Sometimes a reaction can result in a change in color from reactants to products. The faster the color changes, 
the faster the reaction. Let's look at the iodine clock experiment to see how the color change shows the rate of the reaction. The reaction happens faster with more concentrated solutions. If we let the gas escape from an open container, the reaction mixture will decrease in mass. We can then work out the reaction rate by working out the change in mass in a set time. So to summarize, the ways that you've learned so far about measuring reaction rates is you can either measure the rate at which the gas volume is produced. Now please note that is different from measuring how much gas is produced. That is not a rate. You want to know how quickly it's produced or how slowly. So again, the important words are per unit time. And because we can measure it, it is quantitative. If we look at the final one, change of mass of the reaction vessel, again, it is quantitative because we can measure exactly the amount of grams is that the mass has changed by. And then we've got these two here, which are qualitative. Remember what we said about qualitative? Qualitative is when you have to use your judgment as to when exactly the color changes or when you can no longer see an X because there's so much precipitation that has formed. Okay, and these are the four ways that you can measure reaction rates. There are other ways, but these are the four that you need to know for this year. Please make sure you understand this and then go practice the questions in the turnable system. Have a great day.